is today I'm going to go over gauges. I get a lot of questions about gauges. How do they work? How do you get them to work? And all of that. And I kind of, I don't have a lot of uh, response for it because gauges are last thing on my list. They cost a lot of money if you get aftermarket. And um, I have, that money I have usually needs to be invested into the powertrain or something that I'm working on. So the reason you're like, how can that be last on your list? You need to know if your engine's running hot and what's going on with your engine. The reason that is, because all I do is run the one wire to the OBD2 port, this data wire from your harness, and you got a power and ground. Once you have an OBD2 port working, you can read all that your engine is doing. And that's what this video is about today. I'm going to show you how I do that and why it's so simple and why I don't really care so much about gauges until way after the swap. This thing right here, an OBD2 dongle. I've used some that were cheaper and they worked okay for a while and I started having problems with them. This one though so far I'm having good luck with and I want to tell you all about it today and show you how it works. I'm going to get live video of what the screen looks like in the car, tell you the whole scoop. Alright, I even put a link in the description below of where you can get your own. Let's go check it out. We'll start by heading out to the truck, show you how this works. Unlock the truck. It's dirty, but that's not what it's about today. So we take the dongle, plug it into your OBD2 port, which I ran here. You put it wherever you want. And actually, I'd prefer to put mine on the other side in the middle somewhere so it's not in the way of your legs, easier to get to. Especially while you're tuning and you have a cable plugged in, it'd be better to have the cable over there out of the way. But, that's besides the point. OBD2 Bluetooth dongle plugged in. And you'll come up here. And I've got a couple ways of mounting the uh, phone. You'll need a Droid device. I use an iPhone as my everyday phone, but I use an old cheap Droid. You can get them cheap used. This one's actually a Galaxy S3, so it's not that old, but we've used older. And you connect it through Bluetooth, and you download an app called Torque. I'll put that in the description below also. Now you'll connect your OBD2 dongle through Bluetooth to a Droid device. Uh, it doesn't work with Apple. Well, there's some apps for Apple, but not as good as the Torque app and on the uh, droid phone so what i use is just an old droid phone that doesn't have service you can get them cheap online pawn shop whatever and i just leave it in here just for my gauges now you open up the phone and it looks like the lighting is bad so let me bring it down here you open up let's see the phone start the torque app and it'll have your gauges I'm going to do an actual live video screen recording of what happens here. But look up in the top right corner. And it's trying to connect to the car through Bluetooth. The key's not on yet, so it's not going to connect to the car computer. But that's how it works, basically. And the ways to mount it to your dash is all up to you, you know. I've been using this one for a long time. It's a cheap one off eBay. Suction cups to the window, and then it just pinches the phone. Works great, but what I dislike about it is you got to use two hands. One hand to pinch it, the other hand to place the phone in place and make sure it doesn't squish your buttons like volume and stuff. Uh, still using it right now, but what I'm going to do <clears throat> is get one of these. I love it. They're by Scotch or however you say it. I usually don't like double sticky and stuff to my dash, but in this case, uh, it's well worth it. You got a swivel, you can tighten it up here. There's a magnet in this rubber, the magnet doesn't hurt your phone. And all you do is you take a little plate that comes with it and just stick it to your dash. It's that simple. Real easy. So when I get in the car with my regular phone, I usually just throw it up there and I have this one mounted up high. But I think I'm going to mount another one of these down here to keep the phone out of the sun and also less visible. So there's your options for that. So what I'm going to do now is go to the live screen recording as as the vehicle connects and you can watch the coolant temp rise all that good stuff we'll do a little driving around too all right i'm turning the key on 
give it a little while for the for the uh, in top right corner there you'll see the car flashing that means it's trying to communicate with the car engine let it communicate you don't necessarily you could go ahead and crank the car actually I'll go ahead and crank the car now but it sometimes it'll take longer than other times for it to actually connect I just restarted this phone which might have slowed down the process Usually it connects pretty quick. Okay, you saw it quit flashing in the top right corner. And it's just connected. Keys on, it tells me the engine's 80 degrees. Intake's 100. Wow, it's a big difference there. <laughs> but let's crank it up. Actually, also remember this. The software will like store the last settings it was at the last time the key was turned on. So the, this data might not be accurate yet until it starts reading. All right, see the RPMs in there? Timing, intake air, I guess was accurate, coolant. You can also tell it to set uh, what your ideal uh, temperature is, and it'll tell you when the engine has reached operating temperature. Right now, I have it set to tell me when it hits 170, so I know I'm pretty. I can start getting on it. The gauges are all optional. What design you want? These are these are just some that I've just thrown up there. I don't have the trans temp hooked up, obviously, but these are just some of the gauges that I've chosen to use. They got lots of different options of what you can use and how you can set it up. There's different screens. You have voltage here, miles per gallon, odometer, trip. So you, you can set up multiple screens. There's my tack. Oh no, that's miles per hour. Thought I had a tack here somewhere. Supposedly it'll do your quarter mile time and all that, but I don't use it for that yet. Mainly right here, this is what I drive with every day. So I can see uh, GPS speedometer there. It'll also do the speedometer from your vehicle so you can compare the two to see how accurate your vehicle, uh, your computer is compared to actual GPS. I just leave it on GPS speedometer for now. Coolant, RPMs, intake air is my most things I watch the most. Uh, I do need to make a box to get my filter away from the engine bay. My intake air is higher than it should be. What's the temperature today? Let me check while this is warming up. It's 86 degrees outside right now. We'll go ahead and uh, go for a drive. backing up right now. All right. Engine operating temperature has been reached. Well, I guess I set the operating temperature at 160. But as you heard though, it'll tell you when it's reached it, whatever you set it at to be. You could use a dial gauge also, it'll let you adjust all of that, rearrange it, change the size of it. They're all options up to you. It's a great tool to have. It'll read your uh, trouble codes also, clear them. I recommend any gearhead should have this. All OBD2 vehicles it works with, that's 1996 and up. Now, this is just the gauge view. You'll want to go through and check 
all the other preference settings in there because there are a lot of options to customize this to what you like and what you want. I have it set up now that whenever I open the app, I push the button, open the app, it goes straight into my gauges. So that way, as soon as I get in the car and unlock my phone, it's there, it starts connecting and, you know, I have gauges immediately. But by default, it will usually come here. This is the home screen. And here it gives you all your options. You know, you got the settings button over here in the top, bottom left. You can go there, you put in your vehicle profile, your weight, that's how it helps to calculate your mileage, all of that good stuff. You, I think you put multiple vehicle profiles in there also. Uh, one thing is, is, if you ever have an issue with trying to connect to your Bluetooth device, uh, go to right here, OBD2 adapter settings, and choose Bluetooth device. Make sure it's chosen your Bluetooth device. If mine was connected to that JVC head unit, that's my radio, it's not going to read any OBD2 anything. So sometimes that is something you need to check when uh, trying to set it up. But all kinds of options in here that you should go through. Uh, let's see, I'll show you the uh, trouble code checker. Oops, cancel. Alright, so right there it says fault codes. Also known as DTC, diagnostic trouble codes. But we'll check that. I know I have trouble codes in here. But uh, touch your magnifying glass. It'll search through and show you your codes. I'll worry, I'm worrying about those later. All right, clear faults on ECU. Uh, did I do it right? Clear, yeah, clear faults on ECU. You gotta be able to erase the check engine codes. Oh, there it is. It's checking. Also, sometimes you may want to, I don't think it'll let me do it right now, refresh, because uh, the codes could have changed. There's a refresh button, the second one down. You can take a screenshot of these, check into them later. Oh, something I didn't even mention that's awesome. Okay, so this device, this droid device that I'm using right now, is not on a cellular service. It's just an old used phone, right? No cell service. But, of course, Wi-Fi still works. It has, it's still a computer. So this application allows you, to, helps you to research what it could be. Let's say, like, say, injector circuit. And we want to see what that is. Uh, and you're not sure, you want more information. So you touch it. You can go to web lookup and it takes you to this website that is very informative. It helps give you ideas of what you should troubleshoot. I'm not near Wi-Fi right now, so it's probably not going to work, but you get the idea. If I was in Wi-Fi, like at home, it would work. Awesome. Hey, I didn't clear my codes. I guess it wanted to, yeah, so it wanted to read the codes first before it would clear them. And now it tells you all this stuff about what happens, you clear your codes and blah, blah, blah. Say, okay, fine. So it takes a couple minutes. It shows a percentage there as it's doing it. Almost done. Now the codes are cleared. You can go to refresh, second one down. It'll take a couple minutes to scan. I mean, this is basically the same, or actually better than what you would get if you went to your local auto parts store and asked them to read your trouble codes because this will help you get a better explanation. You know, you'll get your trouble codes and you'll be able to go right there to the web and learn, research more information on that and get an idea of how you're going to troubleshoot it. And there you go. It's not showing any codes right now because the vehicle hasn't run again since I cleared them. So what you would do, you know, you'd go drive it down the road, see if, see what codes come back. For example, my injector circuit one, I knew that one was on because I had the fuse out earlier while it was running. So it threw a code. But it's an old code, so that one's probably not coming back, etc. There you have it. You see, j these are just some of the abilities of the Torque app with the OBD2 Bluetooth dongle. I'll have listed in the link below. I'd like to add that something I've noticed with this OBD2 dongle is that it works with multiple different vehicles. And some of the cheaper ones I've used in the past, uh, they would work on some vehicles and not others because you've got different protocols and different ways they work. 
And uh, as most of y'all know who's been following me for a while, I'm cheap and I usually like to go the cheapest way possible. I used to use a little $5 one and it worked for a while. But now when I buy those $5 ones, they don't work anymore. I've had issues and I'm tired of dealing with those issues. I like having one dependable and this one I believe is dependable. I'm not just throwing it out there to try to sell something. I'm recommending this because this is the one I use and I like it. And actually yesterday or the day before, I just used it on a different vehicle for my buddy because he had one of the old cheap ones said it wouldn't work with this vehicle. I said, here, try this one, see if it works. It'd be a good test, something for me to find out and share with y'all. So it worked, and now I'm recommending it to you. I will have the links to not only the OBD2 Bluetooth dongle, but also the Torque app and the two different mounts that I use in my truck. I'll put them in the video description below. And if you are interested in those items, please purchase from the links in the description below. That helps support a gearhead for life at no cost to you. The price stays the same but I get referenced that I pointed them out. It helps support a gearhead for life and I'd appreciate it. The Bluetooth adapter runs 25 bucks. The app, the Torque app runs five, seven dollars. I'm not sure, I don't quite remember. That means right there was that under 40 bucks. You have an awesome tool to help you troubleshoot things in the future and get accurate readings on what your engine is actually doing. All right, gearheads, I hope that was helpful for you. You that were curious and interested on that subject. I slapped this video together real quick today because I'm trying to get back on the Camaro. I'm actually making progress on the Turbo LS 1992 Camaro today, and I'm going to get back to it. Wrapped it up short and sweet, but if you'd like to continue watching me drive down the road, seeing the gauges, more screen, live feed recording, keep watching. It's not the end of the video. All right, so what I'm going to try to do here is get a little bit of driving on the freeway. It's going to be real windy, so you probably won't be able to hear me. I may have to narrate over later, but I want to... So you can see how it shows the RPMs at speed, a little acceleration, a little make, uh, kick down, and how all that looks. I'm on my way to Lowe's today. I gotta pick up some parts, some tools, so uh, we'll make a trip that way.
got what I needed. I'm back home grinding stone for my bench grinders and razor blades. Hope that was helpful. Y'all have a good weekend. Pick up a wrench and be productive. Welcome back to your head. Today, I'm going to show you the cheapest, fastest, and easiest way to get your stock unmodified LS harness running on your next swap project. 